And one of the places they are turning to for inspiration is an ancient and untapped source. Magic Singh is a master of illusion. His livelihood depends on his ability to confuse, trick, and deceive. It's something magicians like him have been doing for millennia. But now scientists want in on the act. Magicians have developed really powerful ways of manipulating what we see. And many of these techniques have been tried and tested in front of live audiences. So by doing so, magicians have sort of developed a very solid understanding of how we see the world. Psychologist Gustav Gunn is well versed in the language of illusion. In a former life, he was a professional magician. Today, he swapped the magic circuit for the science lab but he's convinced there are some important lessons to be learnt from plundering the magician's book of tricks. Can't you take the card out? <laughs> We're not really that interested in the magic tricks per se, but what we focus on is the techniques that magicians use to manipulate your perception. OK, now I'm going to put the eye tracker on you, so if you could just wear these glasses. In order to find out how these illusions work, Gustav Gunn has developed an eye-tracking experiment to enable him to find out what's happening when we watch certain Excellent. tricks. Now, in the vanishing ball illusion, the magician tosses the ball up a couple of times, and then on the final throw, he just pretends to toss the ball up in the air. Yet, most people actually experience an imaginary ball, leave the hand, and then sort of disappear somewhere up there. But when Gustav analysed his data, he discovered the eyes and the brain told a very different story. Now, the eye tracking data showed us that whilst most people were fooled by, by the illusion, the eyes weren't tricked. So the eyes, rather than actually looking at the imaginary ball, just stayed on the face. And what this showed us is that the illusion really happened in people's minds. What this trick really demonstrates is that rather than seeing what's physically present, the way we see the world is based on our prediction of the world. So we see things that we expect to see. So in this case, we expect the ball to leave the hand, and that's why we actually see the ball, even though physically it's not actually present. When it comes to what we see, the brain often overrules the eyes even constructing events that may not have actually happened. It's an important insight into how our visual system operates in the real world. Now, in the real world, things happen incredibly quickly, and we have to respond at great speed and accuracy to visual information. This information processing may take up to 150 milliseconds, and that kind of delay would just be far too great for us to miss, for example, catching a ball or so. So rather than just relying on this information, what the visual system does is it predicts what's going to be happening in the future. So in many ways, what we actually see is what's going to happen in the future rather than in the present. So seeing may not always be believing. But is our sense of hearing any more reliable? <laughs> 